it is easy for us to make assumptions about what it means to age from what we see around us. In this video, we will answer the most widespread myths. But first of all, it is important to note that there are also positive aspects to growing old, and that the best way to enjoy them is by acquiring or continuing healthy habits and lifestyles. And what are these? We will be unveiling them as we demystify the most common beliefs about getting older. As people age, some may feel isolated and lonely. This can lead to depression, anxiety, and sadness, but this is far from a normal part of aging. In fact, growing older can have unique emotional benefits, such as those resulting from long-lasting relationships with friends and family and shared experiences and memories. What's more, there are studies, like the one I'm going to link to in the description that show that older people are less likely to experience depression than younger adults. However, the symptoms in older people may be less obvious, and they may also be less likely to talk about their feelings. The point is that depression is a very common, potentially serious mood disorder, but effective treatments are often available. As we grow older, it is more difficult for us to fall asleep and to recover it if we wake up. But it is incorrect to deduce from this that this is because sleep needs decrease with age. All adults need between seven and nine hours of nightly rest. This keeps us healthy and alert, decreases the risk of falls, and improves general mental well-being, among other benefits. Of course we do. It's one thing if we don't feel like we have the study skills we had when we were young, but it's quite another if we can't learn anything new, create new memories, or even improve our performance in a particular area, like improving our vocabulary. Learning new dance steps, or doing crafts. But above all, you can acquire a unique knowledge and understanding of a lifetime of experiences. And in the wake of this, how about sharing that vision with others? I don't mean just the family, but also active participation in a club of our choice. Social activities keep our brains active, and we are able to learn new things. Dementia is not a normal part of aging, and those who speak of senile dementia are confusing correlation with cause. The fact that dementia appears in older people does not mean that it is caused by their age, but rather that there are more circumstances that favor its appearance. And of course, it is not something inevitable, as is shown by the fact that we all know people who are close to 90 or 100 years old who keep their heads very well furnished, right? Oh, and let's not confuse forgetting a date or the keys with dementia. Those are minor forgetfulnesses that have no major significance. But if you suspect that the problem may be greater, you will have to turn to a professional to determine the causes and analyze if they are treatable or reversible. In any case, establishing the cause is the best way to determine what steps to take next. Unfortunately, it is all too common to think that, after a certain age, exercise can do more harm than good, especially if you have a chronic disease. However, studies show us just the opposite, that we have a lot to gain by being active, and a lot to lose by being sedentary. In fact, it is an activity rather than age that explains why some older people lose the ability to do things for themselves. The fact is that almost anyone, at almost any age, and in almost any health condition, 
can find some physical activity from which they will derive better mental and physical health and more autonomy. Moreover, it is known that certain exercises such as Tai Chi improve balance and stability, which in turn can be a very good strategy to prevent falls and fractures. It is true that certain genes increase risk, but it is not certain that we have inherited just those. On the other hand, environmental and lifestyle factors such as exercise, diet, exposure to pollutants and smoking are known to affect the risk of Alzheimer's. And we can control that, unlike our genes. We can exercise regularly, control our blood pressure, and not smoke. It is estimated that 20% of drivers are over 65 years old, considerably more than in the past. And this has to do with the fact that we are better able to get older, and we don't lose as many reflexes, sight, hearing, or motor function. And here lies the question, when to stop driving should be determined by ability, not by a number. Although women undoubtedly suffer more, one in five men over the age of 50 will suffer an osteoporosis-related fracture. The fact is that men start out with a higher bone density, but between 65 and 70 years old, men and women lose bone mass at the same rate. Many of the things that put men at risk are the same as those that affect women, including family history, lack of calcium, vitamin D, and exercise. But they also affect decreased testosterone levels, excess alcohol, use of certain drugs, and smoking. No matter how old, how long, how much you've smoked, you always win. For example, you become less vulnerable to respiratory viruses, bronchitis and pneumonia, and you gain a general sense of well-being. But the benefits can be measured within a few hours. The level of carbon monoxide in the blood drops. Within a few weeks, circulation and lung function improve, and over time, heart rate and blood pressure may drop. Not only that, but the risk of cancer, heart attack, stroke, and lung disease is reduced. It is one of the few health interventions whose benefits are not only individual, but improve the health of those around them. Not to mention the example it sets for children and grandchildren. Hypertension is a very common problem among older people, especially those over 80, and can lead to very serious complications if not treated properly. If your blood pressure is normalized by medication and lifestyle changes, it means that they have worked, and abandoning these measures will certainly lead to a return to high blood pressure. Health complications can range from stroke to kidney disease, among many others. And with this, we have answered the 10 most common misconceptions about growing up. Thank you very much, and see you in the next video.